Hey everybody, Randy Brown here for Vlogging with Mr. Brown. Today I've got some disappointing news. I only lost 40% of a pound yesterday, but I am at 27.6, so it's not that bad. I'm still making progress. And uh, what was the empowering belief that we learned yesterday? Anything beats nothing. But uh, this is a perfect time to bring out my secret weapon. It's called the Machinist Diet. And the Machinist Diet is was created by Christian Bale for the movie The Machinist and uh, what Christian Bale did to lose all that weight for the movie and he got ghastly thin by the way he ate a can of tuna fish and an apple a day and that was it now this is just my punishment for losing so little weight and uh, if I was losing more I wouldn't punish myself this way but you gotta I gotta hold myself accountable you know and you know even though i'm making progress i need to step it up so i've already walked a lap today and this is before 1 30. so i'm gonna walk all the way down to the 7-eleven which is about an extra half a mile and i'm gonna take you on this journey with me but i'm also going to talk about leverage today now what is leverage uh an easy way to think about leverage is just making a bet with an accountability partner you know so i mean the leverage that i'm using is uh if i don't get if i don't reach my goal of 227 by the third um which is actually three days away so i might have to like retitle the uh the videos before this if i don't reach my goal by the third um i'm gonna get my friend a DVD that costs twenty dollars or less. If I reach my goal by the third, I'm gonna get myself a book or a DVD. So there you go. So yeah, an easy way to think of leverage is just making a bet with someone, and that's all you really need to know. And what you want to remember is leverage hangs on the pain pleasure principle, and uh, pain pleasure principle breaks, basically breaks down like this: people either move toward pleasure or move away from pain. Now, a perfect example of this is like, say your hand was on a table and I brought down a knife on it. What would you do? You'd immediately pull your hand away. You would literally move away from the perceived pain. You know, you'd pull your hand away before the knife got all the way down. And then talking about moving towards pleasure, well, what do you do? If you see a pretty girl, you move towards her and talk to her. If you want to see a movie and movies bring you pleasure, what do you do? You go to the movie theater. You move towards pleasure. In neurolinguistic programming, this is called metaprograms. And this is just one of like 60 metaprograms. But they call it moving toward or away from. Moving towards pleasure, moving away from pain. So now there are several areas you can use this in. But the first thing you want to do is you want to get an accountability partner. And you want it to be somebody pretty hard-headed and somebody who's not going to let you welch. Someone who's not going to give you any wiggle room. Because one time I had my mom as an accountability partner and I was two days away, I wasn't really reaching my goals. And she said, oh, it's okay, Randy, you don't have to pay me the money. And then all my motivation just left me because there was no perceived pain, you know? Another way to think of the pain-pleasure principle, you know, moving, tr moving toward and away from, is think of it as the carrot and the stick. Now, some people are motivated by the carrot. Some people are motivated by the stick. That's me. And some people won't get motivated unless you use both the carrot and both the stick. So let's say you want to motivate your kids to, you know, do homework or clean up the room. First, you could motivate them with the carrot. You could say, hey, you know what? If you finish your homework or if you clean up your room, I will give you a big fat bowl of ice cream or I will take you out to a movie. And then if that doesn't work, first try the carrot and then you could try the stick. You know, you could say, you know what? If you don't finish your homework, if you don't clean up your room, guess what? You're grounded for the day. And like I said, some people are motivated by the carrot. Some people are motivated by the stick. Some people are motivated by both. So, you, you know, if you're a parent, you could say, you know what? 
if you finish your homework and clean up your room in an hour, I'll take you to a movie, but if you don't, you're grounded. So, And this is a simple way to motivate people, not only to motivate yourself, but motivate others as well. And these are ways to motivate people, and these are ways to get things done. And me, I find that the carrot and the stick work for me. Like I said before, tons of times, uh, if I don't get down to 227 by July 3rd, I'm going to get my friend a DVD. And then if I do get it done, in fact, if I get it down to 226, I am going to get myself either a DVD or a book. So I'm using both, both pain and pleasure to motivate myself. And you'll find that this really works. It really does. And you'll be able to do all sorts of amazing things if you can get this one thing down. You know, you'll be able to write a 120 page script in 12 days. You'll be able to lose 10 pounds in a month. I mean, uh, the potential and possibilities are really limitless. And another thing on leverage and accountability partners is one person asked me, well, Randy, uh, can I just hold myself accountable? And that is a yes and no answer. If you are the type of person who's reaching your goals, then yes, you can hold yourself accountable. On the flip side, if you're overweight and you're not meeting your goals, then obviously the answer is no. Because if everybody held themselves accountable, everybody would reach their goals, everybody would be successful, everybody would be slim and, and in shape. So that is the answer to that. Another way you can utilize leverage, there's three tools on the net that can help you. YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. So one way to use leverage is to make a public declaration. And a lot of people would be asking me, well, Randy, if I make a public declaration, doesn't that put pressure on me? A fair amount of pressure creates diamonds. And that's what I've done. And you know what? I do feel pressure, but you know what? It's the good kind of pressure. I want to apologize to the dude. The dude said, hold, hold the camera up high, but it's really tiring to hold the camera up this high all the time. Even though I only lost 0.4 pounds, uh, what's cool is I am still at the lowest weight I've been in five years. So, you know, remember your empowering belief. Anything beats nothing. I'd like to leave you with some wisdom from Ron White. Uh, not the Blue Collar Comedy Tour Ron White, but the two-time world memory champion Ron White. He said that every day is a good one, just some are better than others. And, you know, there was also another person who said... Every day above, gr above ground is a good day. So those are two things. But like I said, I got to hold myself accountable. I got to uh, what I'm doing today, machinist diet, plus about two extra laps. So my name is Randy Brown, and I will talk to you, Plotre. All right, bye.